is the kind of the town key of, as it were. You can time here we think for free. Uh, at least during low season you can. Finished our laundry run. Seeing, watching our crew learn how to use passerelle in seriously <laughs> steep conditions. Goodbye to Bermuda. Let's think it's got heading out seven days. I don't know it. It's gonna be good. Another seven days, baby. Mm -hmm. Then we get to have a beer. Yeah. It'll be fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't drink on passage. Occasionally we might do a captain's hour, but kind of rarely, so. Um, we've been drinking pretty heavily on land though. <laughs> we go. Those hold and about oh, six and a half knots, seven knots. It's going to be a beautiful few days to start. We're not so sure about the second half. of our leg from Bermuda to St. Thomas. Uh, we come into some squalls, nothing too big, uh, but we're having a problem with our head sail. Uh, we think it's doing the wrap at the top again. Uh, we've, had, we've had that problem with it before, um, and now it's jammed. We can't bring the sail down physically uh, to take it off the, the um, foil. We can't furl it up, and we can't let it out. So it's all the way out. Um, once we get past these squalls, I think Kevin's going to be going up the mast while we're out here at sea. Luckily, it's calmed down a bit. Uh, the, the waves aren't super large. Um, we're only seeing 19 knots of wind in this squall. Uh, so we're hopeful that once it passes, we'll, we'll be uh, able to take care of this and get the sail dealt with. Luckily, we're able to get around these squalls back here. So we've dodged them. And now we're... Just trying to get past this one over here. Once we're through that, there shouldn't be any other squalls on the on the horizon. So, wish us luck. So the situation is we uh, started to reef our headsail and something wrapped up top. It's been kind of an ongoing problem with this furler. It's, it's the upper swivel is slowly dying and, and, and seizing up. And it's uh, it's wrapped the I mean I purposely wrapped the halyard in order to get to get it to furl before uh, because it wouldn't spin the, the swivel wouldn't spin. And now we're basically dodging squalls uh, with our entire headsail out, which is a huge 145% Genoa, and and unable to do anything to to, to reduce sail at all, and uh, it, it won't even turn back out anymore. So. It sucks because I'm going to have to go up on the on the mast here, and we've only got a couple of hours left of daylight, 
And so, and, you know, so we're waiting for these squalls to break um, to either side of us. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna scurry up there if, if I can and see you know see what see what see what's going on up there. Um, and it's just it's not something I'm real excited about doing. Uh, but this is this is the sort of thing that has to, you know you, you have to do something about it. Um, I can't even lower the, the sail out of the slot right now because it's got a wrap of at least one wrap around the foil and the foil just will not move. Um, so I don't know what to do other than to go up there and inspect it and find out. Kevin's getting ready to go up on the bosun's chair, try to fix our problem up at the top of the mast. not get up to the top of the mast. The bosun's chair was flogging around too much, um, so we've uh, abandoned that attempt. And now we're trying to see if we can either bring the sail all the way down or furl it in. We're still trying to mess with the furler, but definitely something's caught at the top. I don't know that we're going to get success out of this, so... 
you got there, Marty? Bacon and eggs from Chef Wendy. Wonderful food. That's <laughs> fantastic. We're all starving. <laughs> Here you go. Second batch coming. Well, at least we're getting good food. Uh, we've had a tough night because of the head sole being jammed and unable to be furled. And so now we're kind of motor sailing. There's not, there's not much wind, not enough to move the boat. So, and there's a lot of squalls around. But the predict wind on the Iridium is, is telling us that we should be getting the wind filling in here in a bit. And I hope it does because we can't motor the whole way um, to the Virgin Islands. It's not gonna happen. So we have to find a way to get the boat moving. But anyway, at least we'll have a full belly when we run out of fuel and are lost at sea. I got down in the salon with a pair of binoculars to look at the, at the headsail swivel and try to figure out what's going on with it. And it looks to me like it's just totally exploded. And it appears that fabric is coming out the top of it, but I don't think that's what it is. As both, both sails are in great condition. There's no damage to them, so there's no source of fabric available. I think that that's most likely that it's a, the plastic inner cone of the swivel is, is, I think the whole thing's just pulled apart. It has a kind of a split ring that runs around in a circle that holds the whole thing together and it, um, it, may have, it may have popped loose from its track or something and that would mean all the ball bearings are gone and everything else. I haven't seen any ball bearings on the deck though. Then on the other hand we had some serious weather the other night and um, in, in short, the, the furler is totally screwed, or the fur, upper furling swivel is, is completely gone, and we cannot furl the main at all. Uh, so what we're going to do, and, and, we, and if we do furl it, if we do find a way to, to lash it up to the force day, which is kind of plan B if we need to, once we do that, we don't have enough sail to actually sail the boat, and we don't have enough fuel to sail to, to motor all the way to the Virgin Islands. So uh, you know, having the sail out is great as long as we have some wind. Um, but we haven't had any wind lately, and when we're, with all the squalls around, we're afraid that the wind that we might get could be really off the chart, and um, it, it sucks to have your, you know, your, your sail not reefed if that, if that happens. So we're just going to have to play it by ear and see. I mean, we are moving in the right direction, and we haven't really eaten into our fuel too bad yet, so we'll see how it goes. Well, according to Scott back here, you would uh, he would see him you know, seven and a half, eight, you know, high seven knot boat speeds uh, and a little bit heavier winds uh, an hour ago, but it's starting to, starting to tail off a tad. We've had great wind the last 24, maybe 18 hours since yesterday afternoon and uh, rolled, been rolling off about 150 miles for a 24 hour period, um, which is good because we're kind of babying our head sole, trying to not, we have had to do a lot of evasive action for, for, um, for squalls. And squalls are, you know, isolated cells of high intensity wind and rain, uh, very common to this neck of the woods in the, as we head toward the Caribbean. And um, it's uh, it's not something you want to mess around with. Our track is, well, maybe I'll go show it, but it was uh, it was crazy. We actually had to motor a few times to try to go, um, you know, directly into the wind uh, in order to try to um, keep the sail from from um, being overstressed. We got our little Gowan stay cell up. Already got another knot of wind. Uh, it sucks about this head so further, but luckily for us, at least so far, the wind prediction for the wind is um, it's, it's pretty steady. There's Miss Wendy, Captain Wendy. Captain Wendy Bly making everyone work and put up stay sails when they would rather That's Right, sleep. when I could have just been reading my book. More, no. more speed, I say. Faster. 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 Stronger. Better. That was a rough 15 minutes. 
really tough. <laughs> now you need a beer, except you can't have one. Not allowed that beer on passage. Good morning, it's 4 a.m. I'm on watch. We're just dodging a few squalls, but nothing too crazy. Um, nice evening. Getting about 18 knots of weather. Uh, there's a lot of cloud cover, so we can't quite see the moon, but there's a little bit of lightness to the sky, so you can see the clouds up ahead. And uh, we're uh, under 600 miles to go. So, having a good time, and I think I'm going to make some apple cake for everybody in the morning. about seven o'clock now. going to be able to avoid any of this over here. It's not showing on radar, so we're just going to have to kind of go for it and see what happens. It just totally sucks not to be able to roll a head saw. I mean, it's just such a basic function of a boat. And to be going through all this stuff fully deployed, it's just absolutely driving me to distraction. Um, but this is the way life is. Might be pinching a little bit. Day 435, I think, on our trip to St. Thomas. We are having to tack up wind to get there. Uh, we've been about 300 miles away for the last day. Uh, we've had a bunch of squalls overnight, uh, but now things are pretty good. But St. Thomas is that direction. might be in our future if we keep this up but we just gotta do what we gotta do and eventually we will get there everything's looking good boat's holding up well crew's a little sleepy after a kind of crappy night and we'll just keep motoring on excuse me we're not motoring we're sailing we're sailors We're still about 290 miles off of St. Thomas. Uh, we're still zigging and zagging back and forth. Uh, but this afternoon, the wind is supposed to switch around and hopefully by the end of the day tomorrow, we'll be able to make the last couple hundred miles in to the island, which is that way. A couple hundred miles. And we're going that way. Uh, there's supposed to be some squalls and um, rain coming, so we're uh, trying to get out from, from where it's going to be and then be ready for the wind to shift around on us tomorrow and take us into St. Thomas. So, Meanwhile, it is a beautiful day, and even if we're not sailing exactly towards our destination, we are sailing pretty damn well. It is a lot of fun. to win now, uh, but we are heading back down toward the islands finally after making our turn and 
great wind that's telling us that the, that the wind will kind of clock around for us uh, and help us go bring us down into the islands. And that's, that's what we're looking for, that's what we're kind of counting on. Uh, the only real problem is that this afternoon and into the evening is predicted for rain and, and, and um, we're quite concerned about that because these squalls are just, are just brutal. And if there's too many of them and you can't miss them, I don't know what's, what we're going to do. I mean, we saw 30 knots of wind last night and just really as close to a knockdown as you can get in this boat. Mass went to 45 degrees and um, start, luckily started dumping wind out of the top of the sails, but oh my gosh, it was, it was, it was brutal. I really can do without that tonight. Um, by tomorrow, things calm down some, supposedly. Although they were predicting 14 knots of wind today, we've been getting 21 pretty much all day. So, who knows? What do you think, Scott? How's the world treating you? Uh, very well. Very well. Beaten into it. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah. We're trying to slow the boat down a little bit. We were going in the sevens and eights. We actually saw 10 on this boat last night, which is something you rarely have ever seen. 10 knots of boat speed. Um, but we're just trying to, you know, go close all. We let a little bit out on our, let a bit out on our, on our head sole, just to try to be nice to it. Talisman is proving her blue water um, creds right now. These are the systems we're running away from. Make sure we don't get caught in the middle of them. It's easy for them to have up to 40 knots of wind in, inside. Um, you just don't want that if you have all your sails out. by the day before we arrive in St. Thomas. And we have good news and bad news on the front, on the, on the sail issue. Um, the good news is we got it furled. And the bad news is it is heavily damaged. Um, there were only, there were only so many 30 knot squalls that that thing can handle being deployed fully and not being able to be to be furled and the reason we were finally able to furl it was because that the top of the sail the head just exploded finally everything else and by the way that little staysail saved the day in my opinion because it was it, it took a lot of it took half probably of the force of the wind um, and helped distribute it between two sails but nonetheless i've got a pretty fair you know, repair bill coming up for this on the when it comes to these when it comes to these squalls i've got to say you know the thing that the thing that's just you have to understand if you're going to be out here doing this is that there's no avoiding them we zigzagged all over the place to try to avoid these squalls and you can understand why the sailors of old you know believed in in in, in gods and, and because when you're when you're out here, it, it just feels as though you're a bowling pin and somebody's up there just throwing squalls your way. They don't form anywhere except for directly upwind and a little bit forward of you. 
Um, and I'm talking, we have 360 degree radar. We can see what's forming all the way around us. And the only place where we get any type of material squall action is directly, you know, coming at us. I mean, time and time again, talking like every hour a new one is forming directly, you know, in our path. And you can say, oh, that sounds stupid, that's ridiculous, you know, it's a trick of the radar and blah, blah, blah. But I, I have to say, it's, it, it, once you get out here, you'll see it. Um, and you have to be prepared for it. There's nothing that you can do to change it. That's the way the world is. Maybe there's squalls everywhere, we're not picking them up. Bottom line is you have to deal with them and they're very, very powerful and very difficult to get around. The second that you start moving in one direction, they morph in that direction. Um, the second you move in another direction, they, 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 they bloom up. Um, we've found that the best the basic tactic we have is to is to tack the boat early. Of course, tacking the boat with you know wasn't helping that head so much either. Dragging it across the the inner forestay and not being able to, to to you know to protect it to furl a little bit to, to, to make sure that it would it would tack cleanly. Um, I had to go out on the. I almost died. I'm serious about this. I almost died the other night when I when I was trying to manually bring that sail around and. 25 knots of wind, and the second that a little bit of air got into the sail and started pulling it through, the, 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 the lazy sheet suddenly wrapped around my, my carabiner for my, for, my, for my tether and yanked me violently around with the sail and almost threw me off the boat. Um, and, you know, I was tethered in and everything, but it would have, the choices would have been having my body ripped in half or, or, or somehow being stretched being thrown off the, you know, off the side of the boat at least, hanging by the thing. So that was a pretty scary moment. Um, that's unfortunately the situation we've been dealing with. So we're forced, of course, after the sail gets damaged, now the Winds go down to about 10, 10 knots, which is not really enough to sail with just this little staysail in, a, in our full main. Um, but you know what? It's helping the engine, and we've got plenty of fuel, at least that's what the numbers tell me. So, knowing what your fuel consumption is in a liters per hour in a, in, a, in, a, in a sailboat is a huge thing. It allows you to calculate. Uh, your arrival times and how much fuel you're going to need and all that sort of stuff and then and then the, the benefit the bonus so if i'm in a little cherry on top is when you get fuel and it adds up to what you thought you're going to need we're finally arriving at st thomas um there it is on the horizon about 20 miles away and we should be there in uh, several hours so we have to go around the back side of the island uh, it's about 10 miles around the backside, so that adds a little bit to it, but. Land is in sight. So excited. It's been a long seven days, I think it is, on this passage. We've had a couple of challenges, but we're just about there. Now all we need to do is get through this last set of storms and get into harbor and get cleared in by customs and all those good things. And then it's beer time. And dolphins. Yeah. Well, here's what we're looking at. As you can see, this is all caught up in there. Meanwhile, up here, hold up. That's good! I mean, look at this. It is absolutely torn apart up here on the top. This foil. Unbelievable situation up here. What happened? I mean, it, it just got fouled up in here and pulled everything apart and split this foil piece completely. So we're looking at 19.1 on this. Um, 
and that's 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 good because it's the same uh, size pin as what's uh, what's down below. Okay, that's it. It's coming down. Pull it down, Marty. Nice job, Cabarino. Now we get to fold it all up. <laughs> 